Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Massive matchup in the ACC Saturday afternoon. Mario Cristobal, the Miami Hurricanes, coming off a of bye, heading on the road to play Louisville. And the reason I emphasize it coming off a of bye, we talked about this Sunday afternoon. I think that's a massive storyline for Miami in this football game where you look at Miami not only definitely dealing with some attrition and injuries over the last couple of weeks leading into that bye week, you should get your starting left tackle and Jalen Rivers back. You should get some guys on the defensive side of the football who were clearly playing banged up a little bit more healthy. So from an overall health standpoint, that's a massive storyline for Miami. But I think secondly, if there was one game on your schedule that you wanted two weeks to prepare for, it was probably this Louisville team, especially going on the road. I don't think there's many head coaches who are better in-game scripters and coaches than what you see from Coach Brown at Louisville. There's a lot of different ways they want to attack an opposing defense. We saw it last year in that Louisville-Miami game. I mean, Miami largely was a little bit confused in terms of what Coach Brown was doing on the offensive side of the football. I think that's a massive storyline as well for Miami. want to get into not only some key players, but I think some key storylines for this Miami Hurricanes team. What do they need to do? to have success against a Louisville team that, again, I kind of said this Sunday, this game feels similar to how we talked about the Virginia Tech game, where on paper you look at Louisville's record and say, oh, maybe not that good of a team, maybe not as good as we thought they were going to be heading into 2024. I don't think that's true. Like I think this Louisville team is one of the better teams in this conference. I don't think their record reflects how good of a football team this is, kind of how we talked about Virginia Tech. Fired up to get into this one now. Before we do, and as always, to the Miami Hurricane fans, y'all know I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. It's been a blast talking this team in 2024, even going back to what they did in the transfer portal in the offseason. Y'all continue to show a ton of love. Appreciate you guys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And I think much more importantly, I'm going to get into a few conversations where I don't even know if I've made up my mind on some of my takes. So I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. I want to start with one of those takes, and that is balance on the offensive side of the football. And I think one of the big storylines for Miami going into that bye week was there hasn't been a ton of balance on offense. I mean, you look at the run pass split and say Miami's only running the football 43% of the time. That's 116th in the country. Now you look at their effective red, 5.6 yards per carry, and that's 13th best in the country. So Miami, when they want to run the football, is having some success, but they're not necessarily sticking to the run game. I think there's two ways that you could look at that talking point and say, one, why are we criticizing an offense that is scoring 46 points per game, which is number one in the country, averaging 8.1 yards per play? That's number two in the country. Like if you if you look at this Miami Hurricanes offense, like there is not much for us to criticize in terms of what Shannon Dawson and what Cam Ward are doing on the offensive side of the football. So I kind of get if your perspective is why would we need to run the football more if we're continuing to score 45 points a game? That totally makes sense to me. Now on the flip side, you're saying, hey, we want this Miami Hurricanes team scooting to you know, continue to take steps and get better as 2024 goes on. We know this team can be dangerous, not only in the landscape of the ACC, but the college football playoffs. What is something they can do to kind of improve as an overall football team? I think running the football a little bit more could really help this Miami Hurricanes offense. And why I think that is, when has Cam Moore gotten into trouble? He's been the best quarterback in college football to start 2024. There's no question marks about it. But you look at the last two games against Cal and Virginia Tech, when has he gotten himself into trouble? It seems like he gets himself into trouble when he feels like he needs to play hero ball and try to do a little bit too much. What's the best way to settle your quarterback in and say, hey, you don't need to do everything. You don't need to be the hero running the football really effectively, keeping this Miami Hurricanes offense on schedule. And so I think you look at that conversation and say, when you play some of the best teams in the country, do you want to have a little bit more balance on offense to settle Cam Ward in? And that conversation has nothing to do with, I still need Cam Ward. We still need Cam Ward to be that difference maker playmaker. And I think a lot of Miami Hurricane fans are at peace that when you have a quarterback, that makes as many big-time plays as Cam Ward does, there are going to be some negative plays as well. Now the conversation is how can we continue to make the big-time plays 
and limit the amount of not disasters, but really bad plays that Cam Ward has. I think one of the answers could be running the football more. And I think getting Jalen Rivers back is certainly going to help. This is a Miami Hurricanes offense that, look, when they want to run the football, they can. And I get Damian Martinez maybe not meeting the expectations that we had for him heading into 2024. But I would argue Mark Fletcher is looking really, really dang good running the rock. And so I wonder if you see Miami, especially with the Louisville pass rush that, you know, from a number standpoint, hasn't been elite. But we all know they have some serious dudes, especially on the edge, that can get after the passer. What's the best way to slow a pass rush down? Run the football a little bit. I wonder if you see Miami try to get back to a little bit more balance on the offensive side of the football. And again, I, I'm I'm not really sure how I feel about it because I kind of want this Miami Hurricanes offense to keep doing what they're doing because it's the number one scoring offense that we see in the country. I think at the end of the day, we look at this Miami Hurricanes team heading into this matchup and say, well, we're not too worried about what we've seen on the offensive side of the football. I think the bigger storyline here is, what you're going to see from this Miami Hurricanes defense, especially coming out of a bye, where's Miami struggled the most on defense? It struggled with giving up the explosive plays, Virginia Tech and Cal. That's how Miami's been in some of these close games. Like from a down-to-down -down basis, Miami's played really, really good football on the defensive side. What's been kind of killing Miami and keeping these games closer than they should is giving up the explosives. You're playing a Louisville offense, and we talked about this at the top that is elite at scheming up explosive plays, specifically in the passing attack. The biggest storyline for Miami in this football game is eye discipline. And for a couple of different reasons, one, you look at Louisville's offense and say, they run play action on 46% of their drop back. So when they throw the football, it is often dealing with play action. And so if you're Miami and you're the linebackers and you're the safeties, you want to make sure that your eye discipline is right. You're not blowing coverages. It's a balance, at least to the, the way I see it, where you look at this Miami Hurricanes defense and say it is built to create a lot of negative plays. It is built to turn the football over. You don't want to take that out of Miami. Like You still want this defense to be extremely aggressive and create those negative plays and force those turnovers. But at the same time, kind of the conversation we had with Cam Ward, we want this Hurricanes defense to still be a smothering defense that is creating negative plays. But can you find that right balance where, hey, we're playing really aggressive, we're working downhill, but at the same time, we're also not giving up busting coverages and we're keeping our eye discipline and we're playing solid in the back end and not giving up explosive plays. Louisville's, you go back to the film in 2023, Louisville against Miami, a lot of play action. A lot of leaking guys into the flat. And what did you see last year where guys were kind of running scot-free down the field because the discipline and eye discipline of this Miami Hurricanes defense wasn't where it needed to be. This is where I think having that extra week to prepare for what Louisville is going to throw at you is massive because they do a lot of things. They do a lot of pre-snap motion. They obviously do a lot of play action. Can you be disciplined with your eyes and can you find that balance between we want to be aggressive, we want to get after the quarterback, we want to create tackles for loss and sacks, but we also don't want to give up the explosive play to a Louisville team that, although it's been really explosive, averaging, you look at the numbers, 9.1 yards per pass, which is number 12 in the country, but they haven't necessarily been that efficient. So if you can take away the explosive play for Louisville and force them to go 12 plays, 80 yards and score a touchdown, you probably feel pretty good about your defense. And I think lastly, stopping the run, this has to do with good run fits, especially from the linebackers, which has been a problem, especially going back to that Virginia Tech game. This is a Louisville offense that has a true freshman running back in Isaac Brown, who is one of the most explosive running backs that you'll see in the country. Now, the thing with Isaac Brown is he's not necessarily a bruiser. If you can get hands on Isaac Brown, he's probably not breaking too many tackles because he's 5'9", 190. But when he gets to the second level free, he's extremely dangerous. And so what's so important for Miami heading into this football game is making sure you're fitting the run the right way. You do not want Isaac Brown getting to the second level clean very often because if he does, he kind of like Bashel Tootin against Virginia or, or with Virginia Tech. When he gets to the second level, it's not just a 15 yard chunk play. It might be going to the house because Isaac Brown's got some serious burners and some serious wiggle when he gets into the space. So you look at Kiko, you look at Wesley Bassaint. Wesley Bassaint's been really good. Kiko, we want to see a little bit more from. This is a massive football game 
for Francisco Maui Noah? Like, can we consistently be in the right holes, fitting the run, not letting Isaac Brown get to the second level? Big time storyline in this football game. And I think the same thing for these safeties. When you're coming down and supporting the run, making sure your angles are good. Because if you have bad angles against Isaac Brown, he's going to run right by you. Again, this is a Louisville offense that is that is predicated. It's built on hitting explosive plays. If you're Miami, can you walk that line between being aggressive and creating negative plays, but also not giving up the explosive play? That's going to be the key to this game. Like how many plays does Louisville have that go for over 20 yards? That's probably going to be the number. Like you could probably cover up that scoreboard for me and say, all right, the game ended. How many 20 plus yard plays did Louisville have? If that box score is lit up, I could probably tell you the outcome of this football game. But if you can limit the amount of times they can find those explosives, both in the, both in the run and pass, I think that puts Miami in a really good spot. So you take a look at some keys of the game on the offense. We're not too concerned about the offense. I don't think Miami fans have a lot of concern about the offense, especially with Jalen Rivers coming back healthy. On defense, I discipline in the passing attack. Good run fits in the run game. You can do those things at a high level. You probably win this football game. I am really excited to watch this. I think this is one of the most talented Miami Hurricane teams that we've seen in a really long time. Going up against the Louisville team that has, in my opinion, one of the best coaching staffs that you see in the country. Going to be a battle. Really excited for it. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later.